Hi everyone, this is Mike with a brief video to try and summarize uh, the idea of limits that you're going to encounter in Module 2. This may be a useful video to watch at the beginning of Module 2, but it could also be a useful video to watch at the end of the module to kind of um, go back over and uh, review the major ideas and think about what you've been working on so you can see the big picture. I call this series of screen captures calculus in a nutshell, and there should be uh, others of these that I'll post throughout the semester. But this one in particular is focused on limits. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what you're likely to see there and uh, what I hope you will take with you as you go through the unit. So one thing to keep in mind is that calculus is about three primary topics. The first topic is, is limits, and that's the focus of module two. One might argue that all of calculus is about limits um, and that calculus is really about one idea and, and this is it. <clears throat> but we're going to apply the idea of limits to two other ideas. One of them is derivatives, which is going to be the focus of modules three and four, and integrals, which is the focus of modules five and six. So limits really forms an important foundation of the course. And so really getting a, a firm grasp on the idea is important as you work through the entire course this semester. So just to dive in a little bit into more detail there. So limits kind of require you to think in two directions at once. You need to think horizontally and vertically um, when it comes to uh, thinking from the perspective of a graph. So in particular, what happens to a y value or in some cases, what happens to a slope or in other cases, what happens to an area? Um, but for now, we're going to focus on y values. What happens to a y value as x gets closer and closer to some other particular value on a graph, say? So you want to be thinking about a point on a graph, a point on a curve of some kind, and the point is moving from left to right, say. And the question is, as, as the point is moving to a particular x value, what's happening to the y value? That's, that's the main idea with limits. One common mistake that students make about limits is confusing the idea of a limit with the idea of a particular function value. It's really important that you uh, distinguish between the two. Limits are not at all talking about what is happening at a particular value of x. Limits are only focused on what's happening close to that x value. So be really careful as you think about limits, although there are reasons why people tend to confuse those things. It's actually, it, it makes sense in some ways that people might confuse them. Uh, and, and if you're watching this at the beginning of the unit, maybe you'll see why uh, in the next few days or weeks. And if you're watching at the end, I hope you will consider why maybe those things uh, might be confused. But maybe the most important thing to remember about limits is that they are not related to what's happening at the particular x value, only what's happening close to that value. And then a third big idea that you should be ready to handle with limits is that you should be able to evaluate limits using a table, looking at a graph, or looking at an algebraic formula. So I want to take a minute and um, look at an example of what I mean there, the three different approaches for finding limits. So uh, you could be looking at a table, at an equation, or a graph. And so let's talk a little bit about what that table might look like. So you might be given uh, one or even two tables that look a little bit like this. And you can see that these x values in the first table are getting closer and closer to the value 3 uh, as, uh, from, sorry, from below. So these numbers are less than 3. And so x is getting closer and closer and closer to the value 3. The same is actually true of the table uh, below it. The, the values, again, of x are getting closer and closer and closer to the value 3. Uh, but they're coming from above. All these values are greater than 3. But notice what's happening in both cases. So look what the y values are doing. This is about 5 and a quarter. This is a little bit larger. This is about 5.33. This is 5.333, and so on. You see these things are getting closer and closer to what looks like about 5.33. And if I get even closer, I can sort of do this 
uh, interactively, I can just type another nine and you can see when I add another nine, I get closer and closer to the value 5.333. And the same is true if I add more zeros to this thing. You can see that my Y value is getting closer and closer to the number 5.33. So that would be what it might mean to think about uh, the limit as X approaches three. So in this case, the limit would be about 5.33. That would be my best guess. And you can see that the, um, the values of these points all seem to be converging on that, on that spot. So that might be how you'd evaluate a limit using a table. It's really just paying attention to patterns. Patterns in the X values, the X values are getting closer and closer to three in both cases. And patterns in the Y values, notice the Y values are getting closer and closer and closer to 5.33. Okay, so that would be a table perspective. What if we were to just look at the equation? Well, the equation uh, is actually a bit more complicated, but the equation that, that those tables actually came from uh, looks like this. Um, and the graph, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, is important. Uh, but notice that this function is not actually defined when x is equal to 3, right? If I type in if I type in f of 3, notice this is undefined because when I plug in 3 into the denominator, I get 0 in the denominator. So f of 3 is not actually defined uh, in this function. And again, remember, limits, I don't care what happens at 3. I care what happens as we get closer and closer and closer to 3. So the fact that it's undefined at 3 is not relevant. What I care about is what happens as x gets closer and closer to 3. Now the equation view, the function view, uh, might be evaluating this limit uh, analytically. That would be another way to say that. And when you want to evaluate a limit analytically, then you're going to use the tools that happen a little bit later in module two. So using things called the limit laws, using the epsilon delta definition of limits might be a way to go as well. Um, but in general, they're going to be, you're going to learn in module two some techniques for breaking this function down and evaluating the limit uh, using algebra and calculus techniques. And um, I'll leave the details of that to the other videos and textbook sections in this module. Finally, you've got a graphical view. And you can see I'm going to zoom out on this just a little bit so you can see that this is not a, a linear graph, although it looks linear when you zoom way in. Um, this is a, a what looks like a very nice smooth curve, but don't forget that if I plug in the value 3, I don't get um, a value coming out. So notice if I move this point along the graph, um, I'll get an x value and a y value. But when I hit the value 3, there is no uh, y value that comes out because the function is not defined when x is equal to 3. But again, notice that as I go up and down this graph, I'm picking um, points that are closer and closer to 3. And way out here, my values are far away from 5.33. But as I get closer and closer to 3, you see the y values get closer and closer to the value 5.33. And it turns out, actually, that the value of this limit is 5.33 repeating, or 16 thirds. So when I say that you should be ready to handle or to evaluate limits using a table looking at a graph or using an algebraic formula. That's uh, essentially what I mean there. Now just a brief overview of the limits module as a whole. So section 2.1 is actually kind of a preview of unit 3. So um, the very first introduction to limits is actually kind of a jump ahead toward unit 3 and, and looking at uh, what limits might mean in the context of slopes and rates of change. But then we go back a little bit to um, think about limits a little more basically. So section 2.2 tries to establish a basic intuition about limits. Section 2.3 tries to put those intuitions on a bit firmer of a foundation using limit laws. One of the implications of limits has to do with continuity. And just a brief reminder, remember limits are not related to or not concerning themselves with the function value. But the idea of continuity 
is when those two things actually match, when the limit, uh, being close to a number, matches what the function actually is at that number. So when you do have a match, um, that's, that uh, is part of the definition of a function being continuous. And the implications for that have to do with something called the intermediate value theorem. And then at the end of the module is a formal definition of a limit. And I just want to point out here, it can be pretty tricky for students uh, in section 2.5. If you leave section 2.5 feeling a bit um, foggy about how and why uh, things work the way they do, that's okay. That's a, a typical uh, result of section 2.5. Uh, but I'm certainly available to help you try and understand it as best you can. Just a few tips uh, working with limits. My recommendation is try to come up with your own examples. Think about functions that you know. Think about weird functions that might uh, cause trouble with the kinds of ideas that you're thinking about. Those uh, are often really helpful for thinking about what limits actually mean. Uh, do finish the assignments and activities first, um, and then my recommendation is try going back to the textbook and uh, looking at some of the exercises at the end of uh, each section there. Um, that in case you need or feel like you want more practice, uh, the, that's a good resource for, for doing that. And I'd also recommend in particular checking out the review exercises at the end of the chapter. Um, the, the exercises that you'll find in the section 2.5 textbook, textbook link. Uh, learning the epsilon delta definition of a limit can often, again, be tricky. And so uh, you may want to seek a little extra practice using the textbook in that section. So with that, I hope this has been a valuable uh, summary of what you should know or have an idea about for limits. As always, if you have questions or concerns about anything you're working on in the class, be sure to let me know.